Um, Black is a grassroots collective created to empower the black community through education, awareness, leadership development, cooperative economics, social media, and tactical action in an effort to combat the many disparities caused by institutionalized racism and white supremacy. We are a leaderful organization consisting of interdisciplinary individuals. We are artists, educators, lawyers, healers, entrepreneurs, parents, taxpayers, and concerned community members. Through a unique focus on culture as opposed to race, we look to emphasize the value of black lives and promote solidarity amongst the peoples of the African diaspora. On Friday, July 8th, 2016, we held a peaceful rally at Liberty Pole downtown for Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, India Cummings, and on those who have lost their lives to police brutality and misconduct. Prior to the event, leaders from our organization were contacted by Mayor Lovely Warren, as well as RPD Union Pre President Mike Mazio, to confirm the peaceful nature of the rally. At the onset of the event, organizers briefed the crowd on rally protocol and the expectation of this being a peaceful exercise of our First Amendment rights. At around 5 p.m., 500 demonstrators began their march through downtown, heading west on Main Street. At around 6 p.m., the demonstrators paused at the intersection of Chestnut Street and Manhattan Square Drive, where they continued sharing testimonials and words of empowerment. At 6.15, the march resumed and proceeded up Chestnut Street. Um, it was at this point the group was met in the front of Um, yes. Uh, so at 6.15 p.m., the march resumed and proceeded up Chestnut Street. It was at this point the group was met in front of the Strong Museum of Play by police in full body armor, helmets, and special batons, who proceeded to aggressively approach the crowd with batons raised, at which point demonstrators were struck and one, was, uh, one demonstrator was arrested. After this, the group returned to Liberty Pole, and at 8.15, the march resumed, and the demonstrators headed toward East Avenue, a little bit before 9 p.m., the group stopped at the intersection of East Avenue and Alexander Street. The group stayed here and continued in singing, chanting, and dancing. At 10 p.m., um, again, the police in full riot gear confronted the demonstrators. Demonstrators were seated as the brigade approached. Within five minutes of arrival, the police began to violently confront demonstrators by pushing, kicking, and throwing them to the ground. Then the officers began to forcefully take demonstrators into custody. The remaining demonstrators were then barricaded in with caution tape, then continued, um, and they continued to aggressively advance on demonstrators with high kicks. And when demonstrators were struck and stood to avoid physical harm, they were grabbed by at least four or five officers and carried into custody. At approximately 1045, officers began breaking rank and assaulting demonstrators and innocent bystanders. Demonstrators who had moved to the sidewalk to avoid assault were then heckled and threatened by drunken white bar patrons and owners of businesses in the area. <clears throat> one who used hate speech and threats of bodily harm. The police proceeded to push demonstrators past East Avenue and out of the bar district. As demonstrators retreated down East Avenue, patrons of City Grill threw bottles and cups at the crowd. At 11.45, organizers communicated with Officer Morbido that we would move demonstrators to the sidewalk and they would cease arresting people. As demonstrators began to, per, to disperse, the police continued arresting and chasing down black people. Included in those arrests were two 13 Wearham reporters, um, John Fawcett, who was a pianist for Bruno Mars, Sapphire Williams, who's, who was bombarded while speaking with the news, and also a father searching for his daughter. Other black bystanders were targeted and chased down by police. Those who were taken into custody were stuffed into, onto a bus for several hours before being processed at the Monroe County Jail. Organizers, organizers were told the arrestees would be given appearance tickets and released later that evening, but were not released until the following morning. According to the Rochester Police Department general orders, we know that appearance tickets could have been given on, the, on site by officers. The police department chose to waste taxpayer dollars and bust everyone. Um, upon release, many who were arrested reported being denied medical treatment for various injuries they had sustained while being apprehended. Throughout Friday evening, demonstrators reported injuries including, but not limited to, blunt force trauma to the body and face, lacerations to the arm, wrist, and face, bruising and swelling to the face, one report um, of extensive nerve, dam nerve damage requiring hospitalization, and one report of a severe panic attack which required hospitalization as well. Since the incident, the organization has also learned that medical transport was denied to the area after it was called. There have been significant discrepancies and false statements provided by Mayor Warren and Chief Simonelli regarding the events of July 8th. These statements have not only tried to minimize the reckless actions of the Rochester Police Department, 
but also attempted to justify their behavior and disregard our organization's successful track record of peaceful protests. Uh, did the peaceful protests call for the significant use of tax taxpayer dollars, such as there will be over 50 assigned attorneys paid for by tax dollars. 112 officers were deployed from the city of Rochester and surrounding towns. The transportation services for those who were arrested on East Avenue, the cost to process, prosecute a violation level offense of 74 people. So given everything that has happened, these are our list of demands. We want the immediate withdrawal and dismissal of all charges against the 74 people who were arrested on the night of July 8th. We want the immediate retraction of false statements regarding the lack of injuries and use of force made by the mayor and the police chief, as well as a public apology to all the men, women, children, and gender non-conforming people who were terrorized on the night of July 8th, along with the 74 protesters who had been arrested. We want officers' names who assaulted protesters to be publicized and for them to be held accountable. We want an independent community civilian review board with the power to review complaints and administer disciplinary action against, against officers uh, limited um, but not, including but not limited to the suspension and firing of officers who are uh, convicted of multiple infractions. This review board should be at least 60% black and Latino to reflect the population of the city of Rochester. We want the immediate demilitarization of the police and the ban on use of deadly tactics on unarmed citizens. We want the immediate end to win broken window policing and racial profiling that negatively impacts black and brown and poor communities. We want less funds to go to the police department and more funding for year-round vocational training and employment opportunities for the youth, after-school programs for young adults, and support of black, -owned, black and Latino-owned businesses. We want the immediate uh, police uh, misconduct must be independently investigated and prosecuted. Um, we also want community voice to be heard in police union contract negotiations and to make sure that union contracts are, uh, have language that holds officers accountable for their misconduct. We will now take a few questions. Mayor Lovely Warren, uh, in response to the Dallas police chief saying that, you know, um, for this all to work out, you need to also work with us, not say, saying something like you should not be part of the problem, we need to all work together for this to be uh, resolved. Uh, can you get comment on that? Um, again, as it was said, um, both the mayor and the um, police union president had reached out to us beforehand. Um, our organization, Black, has held pro peaceful protests throughout the city of Rochester since August of 2014. There have never been any incidences. They have always been peaceful. So even from our history and track record, there would be no reason to suggest that this would be anything other than a peaceful protest. And again, we have a direct line of communication to them. So at any point during the night, they could have called us to ask us what's going on, and they didn't do that. In the press release, you mentioned that you're refuting some statements made by uh, Chief Simonelli and the mayor. Uh, what exactly, what specifically are you uh, trying to refute here? Um, I know one specific thing is that there were minimal injuries. Sorry. Uh, one thing is that there were minimal injuries. Um, actually, uh, some of the damage that was done is extensive, uh, which we already stated, which required hospitalization. Um, it was just premature for them to state that there were just mineral or minor, uh, minor injuries. Since, um, since you guys have had a few days, have you debriefed and is there anything your organization has learned from this rally that you're going to change or keep in mind for the future? Because I'm sure that you'll continue to hold rallies since it's something you've been doing since 2014. Yes, there have been debriefs. There have uh, been several. Um, there, have been, there have been debriefs. There have been several. Um, and some of those have also included um, outside parties who are involved, like Mayor Lovely Warren. So um, absolutely, this is a learning process, and we continue to learn. There are some unanswered questions, however, as you heard in this in the statement that was read, some discrepancies that that would help would better help us prepare for more peaceful demonstrations. That we are still waiting for answers from uh, the administration. Now. What kind of questions do you still have? Then? For example, uh, the issue of riot gear and uh, the special. Um, 
uh, batons and things like that being used for peaceful demonstration? Is that something that we can expect in the future? Because that is a, is a concern, as well as some of the expectations that, ha uh, that have not been clearly laid out about communication, because we felt that there was an open communication at all points. So is there something different that we can do? We haven't heard back as to, as to uh, what are those expectations. Is there anything different that you guys are going to do on your end at future rallies? I mean, shutting down that major intersection, you had to know that that was going to bring attention and stopping commerce isn't, you can stand on the sidewalk all night long and get the same attention, but you can't stand in the middle of the street and do that. Actually, it is our First Amendment right to protest um, peacefully, so part of our strategic action was to stop the economy of the East End. Um, the East End is known for, and it was uh, actively uh, demonstrated there by the bar painters and bar owners who made threats against protesters, ra uh, made racial remarks, that that is um, an area that is constantly um, guilty of discrimination against certain citizens in the Rochester area. So we felt it was imperative to do an action there because if everyone is going to talk about this is one Rochester, then one part of Rochester cannot be partying while the other part of Rochester is mourning. We need to come together and be willing to have dialogues about these issues. And for some, it takes us getting to the street and stopping the cash flow for that to happen. Do you know I, if there were any um, of the people, the bar patrons or owners that were throwing bottles and uh, antagonizing? Uh, protesters, if any of them were arrested or detained? No, they weren't. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. I think the contention, though, is that you weren't just on the sidewalk, it was in the actual street, and police were saying in the press conference that the legality of actually blocking traffic was, was in question. Not the First Amendment right or the right to protest, but actually being in the street. Um, I think, as we've stated before, we've held other peaceful protests where we've blocked off the street. Um, so again, the discrepancy of, you know, if, if this happens again, are we going to be met with riot gear? Because um, we've done this before and we didn't, we weren't met with this type of reaction. Um, I remember probably maybe two years ago, uh, maybe a year ago or so, uh, we did um, an action where we were in the middle of Frost and Genesee Street. Um, and we were in the street for quite some time blocking that intersection and we didn't get this kind of reaction from the police. So again, um, you know, going back to the same statement, we've had peaceful protests before and we were not met with this reaction. No arrests at all. So going forward, we want to we want to know, is this what we have to look forward to if we go into certain areas of Rochester mm -hmm. that are predominantly uh, white areas and not predominantly black areas? And Simonelli said that, um, the, that um, blocking the street was what led to arrest, that he communicated with protesters to move to the sidewalk if they did not wish to be arrested. Was that the case? Was there communication or were people surprised being arrested in the middle of the street? Some people who were not a part of the protest, who were just coming down to East Avenue, were arrested, who were not even a part of the protest, and they were on the sidewalk as well. Um, it's Eric Garner's an the anniversary of his death. Um, you guys have been out protesting since then. Uh, well, before that even. Um, has anything changed um, as far as how the city and the police uh, are, are handling, you know, treating um, African-American uh, youth and uh, people of color in the city? So we have a tutoring program um, that we do during the school year every Tuesday and Wednesday and routinely um, our students there are harassed by police officers. They're um, stopped on their bikes. They are um, harassed, searched. They're always being heckled by police officers um, in the Southwest uh, area by Arnett Library. Um, so no, nothing has really changed at all. I mean, this protest is a clear demonstration. The results of this are a clear um, example that nothing has really changed. I mean, a few of us have gone to Ferguson and we faced the same kind of police force when we were peacefully demonstrating. Um, and it's just, I guess for a lot of people, it's a shock to see it happen here in Rochester. But again, this is a reality that is very real for some citizens of Rochester and not others. And that's why we're elevating these issues. Well, you know the mayor had uh, said she met with uh, representatives of your organization, I believe, on Sunday for a couple hours. Did any of that, did she seem uh, receptive to what you're talking about, say she would follow up on it? What was her impression of that meeting? Um, there were some things that uh, were stated that she said that she would follow up on, um, and we're looking forward to meeting again to, 
to hear some answers. There were things that she knew about that happened that were very wrong that she had that we didn't know about that she was looking into. Um, so again, we're we're looking to have some of those discrepancies to fleshed out even with the police chief as well to see um, what what are we going to do moving forward and how can we still demonstrate our First Amendment right without um, uh, a majority of the arrests happening in Rochester, whereas New York, Atlanta, um, California, different uh, Black Lives Matter um, movement places have had had more demonstrators than us and far less arrests. Why do you think you were, why do you think the police came out differently this time versus all the other times? And will other, other you mentioned other Black Lives Matter groups throughout the country, they have de-escalation units. Is that something that you're looking to possibly implement in the future? Not only de-escalation <laughs> units, but uh, f new trainings for officers. But again, we have our list of demands. A large part of this is the account accountability of police officers. So it's not just how they're treating the public. It's when they treat the public or are um, accused of abusing the public, there are almost no ramifications for officers. There's no level of accountability, particularly because the union contract actually protects them from um, uh, you know, uh, having to go do certain things and all this stuff. And so even with the uh, elevation of body cameras, I know is a big thing in Rochester now, the, who is allowed to look at that footage? And how will that, how will the police union contact work to protect police officers when an incident happens and then the citizens can't go and look at that? So we're looking for a level, level of transparency and accountability with the police department. It's my understanding that you guys had this rally planned before uh, what happened in Dallas on Thursday night. Was there any consideration to maybe hold off a day or any, uh, did, were you surprised you were met? Because Simonelli did talk about the heightened awareness and concern in, in the police, um, as police officers after watching what happened in Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we have to always look at, at numbers and facts. Um, so since August of 2014, there have been a number of highly publicized cases of black men and women being killed by the police in police custody, whether on video or not. Um, and this is a systematic issue that continues whether um, officers are killed or not. Um, it is very unfortunate, and I think that both things can exist at the same time. Um, feeling, feeling empathy towards police officers who were um, killed unjustly, but still that person was brought to justice. Uh, we know that they put a, a bomb on a robot and he was then killed, okay? Mm -hmm. Whereas these people, uh, Philando Castell and Alton Sterling, were still waiting, um, and we know that those officers went on paid administrative leave. Um, so we're looking for justice, um, whereas uh, police who are murdered, they get justice. Um, swift, very swiftly, um, where black people who are murdered by police or victims of police brutality have to then wait on justice or don't get it at all. Um, as we see one by one, the officers who murdered, who were involved in the murder of Freddie Gray, have been let let off one by one. Um, and so it's it's a strategic plan to let them off one by one. So we charge them all at once, and then they're all um, not 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 getting convicted. or not convictions, no convictions one by one. Um, so I think that both can exist at the same time, but the focus is justice and who gets it and who will not get it. Um, and we're hoping that with continued protests and continued demonstration, um, that our voices are heard and that justice is carried out uh, for those who commit these murders and crimes. Are you planning on any pro uh, more protests in the future? Uh, there will always be more protests and demonstration, yes. <laughs> what think, what, uh, what are uh, the... Um, fact that the uh, police chief and Lovely Warren both emphasized the fact that the police were not able to take calls because it was such a dangerous situation with, uh, with the protest that they had to call in other from other areas mm -hmm. and those people in the suburbs were not being uh, taken care of, that it was such a, a volatile situation. Um, that um, they needed all this, this police and that uh, they had to call in reinforcements. What do you say to that? Again, I like Chanel's notion that we should look at the facts and the numbers and given our history, there have, we have never had any incidents like this beforehand given the 15, 20 protests that we've done since we began in 2014. So decisions were made by 
the, either the police chief and the mayor to allocate certain resources to a peaceful demonstration where it didn't need to be. So again, as early as 6.15, when the sun was out, there were police officers, at least 40, in full-on riot gear who met peaceful demonstrators as they were moving through downtown. So that is a question more so for them as far as why did you feel the, necessary, uh, the necessity for these kind of resources? Because again, our history is nothing but peace. Do you think that anything could have been done differently or do you have any regrets on the side of the protesters? Because at one point, you know, it was non, of non-violent protests on the side of the protesters, but as the night progressed, um, profanity started getting thrown and like, like it seemed uh, like someone could construe it as taunting the police, calling them Nazis, and not saying that that was from the group, but it was definitely heard from protesters, things like that. At this time, we're going to actually close down questions. We'll take this last questions, and we'll be closing down questions at this point. Thank you. Uh, part of the First Amendment as well is free speech. So we do have a right to uh, whatever person or demonstrator felt that they were going to express what they were feeling at the time of being um, aggressively approached by the police. And um, if that's what that demonstrator felt that, that needed to be expressed at the time, um, they have a right to do that. Um, what the police don't have a, a right to do is then forcefully and you know inflict bodily harm on peaceful protesters. It still was just a, a huge overreaction to the situation. Um, so yes, I, that goes back to the First Amendment. We can st we can still say what we want to say. Um, at that point, there was still no violence in the in the space. Um, everyone was. If there's video of what the people were actually doing. Um, most of your news outlets that are sitting here today were there to, to and there was one live stream that went on, I heard, for at least an hour on, um, huh? And we can also uh, link to you other videos that some of our demonstrators took, um, but uh, that you were, some of you were there that evening, so to say that there was any sort of, that that, that reaction equated um, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, do you think that, you know, if, if the goal is to bring people together, that mm -hmm. maybe not? <clears throat> yeah. like, so again, we have, to, we have to look at the, the re, what people were reacting to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we were being aggressively advanced upon by a brigade, a brigade of officers in riot gear. Um, that brought tensions up, okay? Um, not to mention that our entire protest was completely diverse. There were people of all races, all ages, all spiritual beliefs who were there with the same message that black lives do matter. So again, so again, this idea that the police's actions were justified when we did bring the city together for one particular cause and it was met with a violent reaction. Um, and that is all we have for today, so thank you uh, for coming out. We really need a last name for the yeah. first person because you can't use it because anybody can say something. That's our First Amendment right, Anita. Okay. She probably might not be Anita, like Asada. 